Hi, I'm Andy Teach, host of Andy's Awesome Adventures, and welcome to Dubrovnik, Croatia. Old Town Dubrovnik was the last stop on our adventurous Croatia island hopping cruise, and for me, it was the highlight of my trip. Here are the top 15 things to see and do in Old Town Dubrovnik. Number 15, the Jesuit Stairs. These Jesuit Baroque stairs were built in 1738 by a Roman architect, which is why there is a resemblance to the Spanish steps in Rome. Do you recognize these stairs? They were featured in the infamous Walk of Shame scene in Game of Thrones. Whether you're a Game of Thrones fan or not, join the crowd and take a selfie on the Jesuit stairs. Number 14, the Church of St. Ignatius. When you go up the Jesuit stairs, you will find the Church of St. Ignatius, which was part of a project that also features the adjacent Baroque Collegium Ragazinum Jesuit College. The church was completed in 1725 and opened in 1729. Inside, you can admire the beauty of this single nave church. Now, before we see the rest of the top 15 things to see and do in Old Town Dubrovnik, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Adventures Croatia, for sponsoring this video and all of my Croatia videos as I travel around Croatia with them. Adventures Croatia is the leading tour operator specializing in travel to Croatia and surrounding countries. They cater to American tourists and are rated five stars on both TripAdvisor and Trustpilot. You can go to their website, adventurescroatia.com for more information. There's a link to the website in the video description. If you mention my promo code, Andy'sAwesome10, when speaking with Adventures Croatia, you'll get 10% off any trip you book with them. Number 13, the Old Synagogue. The Old Synagogue is the oldest Sephardic synagogue still in use today in the world and is the second oldest synagogue in Europe behind Prague Synagogue. It is said to have been established in 1352 but gained legal status in the city in 1408. The main floor still functions as a place of worship for the High Holy Days and special occasions, but is now mainly a city museum, which features many Jewish centuries-old artifacts. Well, Dubrovnik is not just about history, religion, and architecture. It's about socializing as well, aka partying. Number 12. Buza Bar. There are actually two Buza Bars high up on the cliffs of the walled city overlooking the Adriatic Sea. It's a great place to have a drink and admire the amazing views. You can even do some sun tanning, cliff diving, and swimming before, not after, you've had a few drinks. Number 11, Dubrovnik Cathedral. The Roman Catholic Cathedral of the Assumption of the Virgin, also known as the Dubrovnik Cathedral, was built from 1671 to 1713 after the great earthquake of 1667, and it's the third church built on this site. Architecturally, what stands out for me are the side altars, due to their intricate carvings, paintings, and sculptures. Additionally, while I didn't get a chance to see it, the cathedral has an extensive treasury with many religious relics from the 11th to 18th centuries, including gilded body parts of St. Blaise, the patron saint of Dubrovnik. Number 10, Rector's Palace. Rector's Palace, which today is a museum, used to serve as the seat of the rector or ruler of the Republic of Ragusa between the 14th and early 19th centuries. The rector was an elected official and governed Dubrovnik. Rector was a formal title for a governor. He didn't have any actual power and it was an unpaid position. The palace also housed an armory, a powder magazine, a watch house, a prison, and a courtroom. As you can see, the museum features a lot of Dubrovnik history, art, and architecture, and is definitely worth a visit. Number 9. The Franciscan Church, Monastery, and Pharmacy The Franciscan Friary and Church belongs to the Order of the Friars Minor. The church was destroyed by the earthquake of 1667, and its interior was reconstructed in Baroque style. The five side altars were sculpted between 1684 to 1696. The friary was built in 1360 in late Romanesque style and contains two cloisters. The upper cloister was built in Renaissance style with arches and semicircular vaults. 
The lower cloister was built in Romanesque Gothic style with arches, 120 columns, and 12 massive pilasters and a promenade. The pharmacy dates from 1317 and is the oldest still functioning pharmacy in Europe and the third oldest in the world. This is not the actual pharmacy, which is next to the church. This is the pharmacy museum, which features well-preserved artifacts from the 14th to 16th centuries. This museum also contains several religious artifacts. Number 8. Onofrio's Fountains Big Onofrio Fountain, which is also a water reservoir, was built from 1438 to 1440 by architect Onofrio di Giordano della Cava from Naples. At the time, the Republic was ruled by Venetian authorities and water was supplied by various cisterns that collected rainwater. Dubrovnik decided to bring its water from a well 12 kilometers away. Onofrio built two water sources above the city as well as various mills along the way. The fountain features 16 original stone-carved masks which distribute water. It provided water to the city until the end of the 19th century when a more modern system was installed that delivered water directly to people's homes. Little Onofrio Fountain, which was built from 1440 to 1442, was also designed by Onofrio, and the sculptures were made by Pietro di Martino of Milan. In the Middle Ages, water had a religious significance, so this fountain was for use by Christians only. Close by was another fountain that was for the Jewish community. Number 7. Banya Beach Stunning Banya Beach is only a short walk from the walled city of Old Town Dubrovnik, and from here you have amazing views of the city. The clear emerald green waters of the Adriatic Sea sparkle as guests enjoy the full service facilities of the beach club. There is a restaurant which features Mediterranean and Dalmatian seafood dishes, a lounge bar, a day club, and a nightclub featuring DJs. The facility hosts various weddings and events as well. You can enjoy massages here and participate in all types of water sports, a private boat tour, snorkeling, kayaking, flyboarding, water skiing, tubing, and there's even an extreme UFO ride. If you're in Dubrovnik, definitely check out Banya Beach. Number 6. O Port Dubrovnik This scenic port is worth seeing from a few different vantage points. O Port Dubrovnik is a great place to people watch and boat watch. Many of the boat cruise tours leave from Oport Dubrovnik. The harbor features defense fortifications that were built mostly in the 14th to 15th centuries. In the early 13th century, Dubrovnik was invaded by the city of Venice, Italy. The Ottomans invaded in the 16th to 17th centuries as Dubrovnik has always been an important city to control due to its direct access to the Adriatic Sea. The three symmetrical vaults form the old arsenal where they built the ships centuries ago at the time of the Dubrovnik Republic. They would seal the vaults with bricks to prevent spying. Once the ship was done, they'd remove the bricks. Now before we see the top five things to see and do in Old Town Dubrovnik, I'd like to once again thank my sponsor, Adventures Croatia, for sponsoring this video and all of my Croatia videos as I travel around Croatia with them. Adventures Croatia is the leading tour operator specializing in travel to Croatia and surrounding countries. They cater to American tourists and are rated 5 stars on both TripAdvisor and Trustpilot. You can go to their website, adventurescroatia.com for more information. There's a link to the website in the video description. If you mention my promo code AndysAwesome10 when speaking with Adventures Croatia, you'll get 10% off any trip you book with them. I mentioned that many of the boat cruise tours leave from Oport Dubrovnik. So, did I take a boat tour? Number 5. Boat Tour from Old Port Dubrovnik One of my top Dubrovnik highlights was taking this 45-minute panoramic boat tour around the walled city of Old Town, going around the very green and very rocky Lokrum Island, and cruising close to the Adriatic Sea shoreline as we passed hotels, caves, and beaches. Yes, we had some rough waves, but it was definitely worth it. Number 4. Hanging out in Luza Square 
Luza Square, which used to be a marketplace, is the heartbeat of Old Town Dubrovnik. Think of it as a really, really small Times Square. The main pedestrian walkway, the Stradoon, leads here, and there's a lot of cool history and architecture here. The Church of St. Blaise, also known as the Church of St. Vlaho, is a Roman Catholic church. It may be the most important church here because St. Blaise is the patron saint of Dubrovnik. He was a physician and bishop who died in the early 4th century AD. The church was built in Baroque style and completed in 1715 on the site of a former Romanesque church. The high altar is a combination of white and polychrome marble. The altar features a 15th century Gothic statue of St. Blaise in gilt silver, which looks like gold. Above the statue is a 17th century quintet of the martyrdom of St. Blaise. Sponza Palace was built in Gothic and Renaissance style between 1516 and 1522. It's been a customs house, warehouse, mint, armory, treasury, bank, school, and cultural center. And today it's home to the Dubrovnik State Archive. Another important landmark here is the bell tower. The Dubrovnik bell tower was originally constructed in 1444, but suffered damage in the 1667 earthquake. It was demolished in 1928 and rebuilt with its original design in 1929. It was damaged again in the 1979 Montenegro earthquake and was restored from 1987 to 1988. Very close by is Rector's Palace, which we saw earlier, and Little Onofrio's Fountain is located here as well. Orlando's Column was erected in 1418 and it features the armored knight Orlando, who according to legend, helped the people of Old Dubrovnik defeat invaders in the Middle Ages. Others say this statue is a symbol of loyalty to a 15th century king because his protection was critical against attacks from the Venetians. Number 3. Taking the Dubrovnik Cable Car Ride Riding the Dubrovnik Cable Car to the top of Mount Surge is a must-do when you're in Dubrovnik. What a thrill it is to ride the cable car and get a bird's eye view of Old Town Dubrovnik, Lokrum Island, and other parts of Dubrovnik as well. From up top, I can honestly say that you will get some of the best views you've ever experienced anywhere. As a bonus, if you're interested in learning about how the 1991 to 1995 Croatian War of Independence affected Dubrovnik, you can visit the Homeland War Museum, which is situated inside Fort Imperial. There's also a restaurant here where you can eat lunch. This cable car ride was not only one of the top highlights of my trip to Dubrovnik, it was one of the top highlights of my trip to Croatia. Number 2. Walking the Stradun in Old Town Dubrovnik The first thing you should do when you arrive in Old Town Dubrovnik is walk on the main street, the Stradun, also known as Plaka, from one end to another, from Pila Gate to Plauce Gate, which only takes about 15 minutes. Along the way, you will experience centuries of history, religion, and architecture. As soon as you enter 16th century Pila Gate and go through the inner gate, you see Big Enofrio's Fountain, the 16th century Church of the Savior, and the entrance to the Franciscan Church and Monastery. After passing a few alleyways and cafes, you arrive at Luza Square. Bear left and you'll see the Dominican Monastery. Further down, right before Plauce Gate, you'll see Fort Revlin, and then you have a great view of Old Port Dubrovnik. After that, you reach 15th century Plauce Gate. You can then go back through Luza Square and past Rector's Palace and Dubrovnik Cathedral. Around the corner from the cathedral is Gundulic Square, the Jesuit Stairs, and the Church of St. Ignatius. Of course, you should also walk through all the small Old Town alleyways where you'll run into cafes, restaurants, and bars, and most importantly, a place to eat gelato. And now, the number one thing to see and do in Old Town Dubrovnik is... Walking the Upper Walls. You've walked on the Stradoon, you've gotten a bird's eye view from the cable car, you've taken a boat ride around the walled city, but now it's time to go up the stairs by Onofrio's Fountain and walk the upper walls to get a different perspective of Old Town and the Adriatic Sea. You can see the centuries-old fortification walls all around the town. They were originally built in the 11th to 13th centuries to protect the city from war and epidemics. Some of the forts were built in the 14th to 15th centuries. 
From up here, you will see so many of the important landmarks that make Old Town Dubrovnik such a great city to visit. As we walk along the walls, we can see the different churches and monasteries, the bell towers, the forts, the port, Locrum Island, and the beautiful Adriatic Sea. You are looking down on centuries of history, religion, and architecture, and I can honestly say this is a very unique experience. There aren't a lot of cities in the world where you can walk all the way around them from up above to get such amazing views. And if some of this looks familiar, it's because Dubrovnik was the main filming location for King's Landing in Game of Thrones. Millions of tourists visit here every year and it's easy to see why. Old Town Dubrovnik packs so many interesting sights into what is basically a relatively small city. On my 11 day Adventures Croatia island hopping cruise, this was our last stop and they saved the best for last. So what is your number one thing to see and do in Dubrovnik? Please tell us in the comments section. If you'd like to see each of the top 15 things to see and do in more detail, please click on this Andy's Awesome Dubrovnik Adventures playlist link. Thanks for watching.